In this clip we're going to tie an elk hair caddis. We we'll start with touching turns of thread down to the bend of the hook. There's no tail on this fly, so you can take the thread right to the bend, like that. And then we're going to tie in some ribbing and a dub body. With the wire tied in, we're going to spin some dubbing. This is life cycle caddis dubbing. It's got some trilobal antron fibers in it to give a very nice natural sort of sparkle. And we try to form a neat dubbed body. Caddis flies are actually slightly hairy, so a little bit of untidiness in the body isn't really that big an issue. That can be an advantage. And put a little tiny more dubbing on there. So it's just approximately one hook eye of gap left. There we go. And then we're going to tie in a cock heckle, which we're going to palmer down the body. Just tie the heckle in, and we're going to wind it down the body in open turns. Now we're going to attach the heckle pliers to the heckle. And make two or maybe three turns close to one another at the start. I like that. I think it gives the fly a much better balance. Open out the turns and wrap in open spiral down to the end of the hook and just leave the heckle hanging in the heckle pliers like that. Then we're going to come forward with the silver wire. Remember this is the only time we're going to wind the silver wire ribbing in the same direction as we wind the thread. And that way it crosses over the heckle and traps it in place when we get to the front, we're going to tie that wire off. Make sure it's secure. And break that. Now we're going to trim this, clean this up. Cut the tag of the hackle off. Cut the stalk. There we go. And we're ready to add the elk hair wing. Elk hair superficially looks the same as deer hair, but it doesn't behave in the same way. It's not as hollow, and therefore it doesn't tend to spin, which makes it ideal for this kind of wing. You can use deer hair for the wing, but it tends to flare more than you want. As usual, take out the under fur. And a lot of people make a mistake of putting too much hair on for these wings, so you don't want too much, it makes it difficult to work with. Take the hair and we're going to put it in the hair stacker and stack the points till they're even. Going to pop the hair in the hair stacker, like that, give it a few bangs on the table. Tilt the hair stacker and take the hairs out, now the tips evened up. Now we've stacked the hair. Measure the length to just over the length of the hook shank about there. Swap hands, pinch and loop once, twice. Hold the hair tight and pull tight. One more wrap, pull tight. Don't trim off these fibers yet because it makes it much easier to deal with if you can lift up the long fibers. Make a couple of wraps in front of them and whip finish. It's much easier to do the whip finish if you've got those long fibers you can hold out the way. And we'll trim them in a bit later. There's the whip finish. Stroke those fibers into the front again where you bend them backwards. And just trim them like that. There's one more there. 
cut at any loose ankles that are facing the wrong way. And there's the elk here, caddis. A couple of fibers here that are just not quite in the right place. Now, some people don't, but I actually like to trim the heckle fibers level with the hook shank so it's not quite as bulky. And there's the elk here, caddis. It's an extremely popular and effective pattern. And it only, doesn't only um, imitate caddis flies, but it's a pretty good imitation for generic bugs in general. Terrestrials in large sizes even cover grasshoppers and beetles. A fly that probably every dry fly fisherman in the world uses sometimes.